You've seen me unbox, you've seen me build. Now let's talk about this kit. Hey guys, this is EA Sports from Flammable Build Report. And if you're enjoying the content so far, please do me a favor, click that like, subscribe, and the bell button so that you can get more updates from me on my build report. All right, so we're gonna talk about a kit that I haven't built in a while. Today, I wanna talk about this simple yet detailed kit, and it has some meaning to it too. And today, I wanna talk about this kit. This is the HGUC RX78 II revived version. This cat has been out since 2015 July. The price is at around 1,000 yen, which is, you can get it for about like from 10 to $12. Obviously, this is gonna be the granddaddy of the bunch. And as most of you guys know, this is the second time that they've made the revision for this kit. Uh, so this kit has been out commemorating the 35th anniversary of the Gundam universe. My overall impression of my build was that this was very simple to make. As you can see from my unboxing video, uh, there were only like five runners over there, including the polycap and the clear parts. So in actuality, there's going to be only three. And it took me less than an hour to put this together. And you could clearly see like over the overall feature, like it's a very simple design compared to like any of the Gundam uh, silhouettes that we all know and love. And it's pretty much rated as the most number one recommended Gunpla for all those beginners out there who want to get started into this hobby. But anyways, let's jump right into this kit to see how good it is. Now let's talk about the overall appearance of this kit. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the color is what you would expect for the first granddaddy Gundam that you see here. You got the red, yellow, blue, and then basically the whole silhouette that we all know and love. So I mentioned that this kit is commemorating the 35th anniversary of Gundam itself. So uh, this kit itself, the overall silhouette, it's more like an anime feel where it's pretty thin and it's not that rigid compared to the old HG. Uh, so I don't have the HG with me right now. It's back, all the way back in Korea, but if you just take a quick comparison, the head's got the head got a little smaller, the shoulder got a little thinner, but has more angles that you can see here. The waist obviously just slimmed down and the legs got a little longer and not to mention it just slimmed down a bit. So overall, I can say the revamped version of this kit is very, very thin just like in any of the animations that you see here. But that doesn't mean this kit is not detailed at all. No, far from it. You can see that they've done a pretty good job of trying to keep the seam lines minimal by having these part look more like a panel line. It's more like, a, more like an accent on their end. And you can see from here, now this is actually not a panel line. So I'll show you how they did, how they did this portion. If we open the leg up, Right here is Bandai's innovation of how they try to hide the seam lines. So obviously for the legs, uh, so these two parts right here, they put them together. So th this is kind of like one of the seam that you see here. But on the front side, what they did is they actually made the front knee part into a separate, a separate commodity. So all you have to do is put it together. And usually if you look at the old kit, like this whole front section is gonna be a huge seam line right there, but they managed to cover that up by just adding another part. So the construction was pretty well done. The one thing that this kit suffered the most is going to be the V-fin area on, on the front skirt. So as you can see, this is just a sing single sticker and it's a, basically a flat part. So without the sticker, it just looks like a, just like a white area where there's nothing to it. So if you want to paint this, uh, you'll have to do some serious work on, on that V-fin right there. One other big change that you'll notice for this kit is going to be the dual eye yellow clear part right here. So the manual gives two choices of how you want to present the eyes. One is just a regular sticker with the yellow color on it or the other option that this one I use is, is the silver sticker that you could put underneath the clear yellow part. So 
uh, you, you, can see, you can see right here. You can see that it's it's kind of reflecting through the camera. Uh, it's kind of hard to see from here, so, but it gives a little more accent and more customization ideas for those who want to input like a LED unit into the head. As for the articulation, uh, this kit does a very good job of having its renewal in the name. And I think for the Gunpla nowadays, this has kind of made the standard of having all of the articulation to be this good. First, the head, uh, you can rotate it around and then you could also uh, move it back and forth. This is a great improvement as now you, you could do something like this. You can see Gundam watching the sky. The shoulder articulation has vastly improved due to its ball joints and the arm. So you could literally move the arm a little forward than usual. This kit has something that's very, truly unique at, at, at the time, which is, which is lifting up all the way up. Never have I ever seen a kit that goes all the way up to accommodate to the, this type of movement. Kind of looks like the last shooting pose, if you, if you can ask me. The elbow joint can go all, almost all the way up to 180 degrees. And the wrist is also in a ball joint, so you could lift it up to truly show its potential. One thing this articulation will truly benefit from is going to be when, is going to be the beam saber. One thing this, one thing this articulation is going to be truly beneficial is the again. One thing this articulation will truly be beneficial is when the Gundam is taking the beam saber out of his back. As you can see, be, due to the very nice double jointed elbow, uh, the arm goes all the way to the back, up to the part where you could just pull out the beam saber, just like so. The waist articulation vastly improved. Uh, don't be fooled by the thin waist that you see here. This waist is actually another double joint apart. So normally uh, on the older kits, you can only move it to left to right, but now you can go up and down just like so. There's a ball joint in the middle of the waist that is allowing it to do so. So you could also, you could kind of move it side to side, but then Overall, this is made to go even further down, to bend down further. As you can see, this can call for more action poses in a more articulate way. The front skirt didn't really change too much. Uh, so I did a little modification here. So normally uh, there's gonna be like, a, this is like a one, one whole part, which if you didn't do the modification, uh, both of these flaps would go all together. But if there's a part where you can like cut, cut the joint in half, and what it allows to do is you can now allow each of the individual skirt to move on its own. It's a pretty nice tip, and it's a pretty nice way to introduce customization. The back skirt, however, didn't use that functionality. So the back skirt itself, you can't move it at all. The legs are now on more of a stem joint instead of the old ball joint. So what it allows us to do is allows more stability and more angle for the Gundam to do splits. The knee can go up quite a bit from here. However, due to the back skirt, it doesn't go any further. The knees, however, are in a double joint and same with the elbow, uh, it goes down pretty well. And the ankle itself too has its own joint, so it, it fur allows further movement forward for more stability. It can even go left to right, but not as much as you would expect. There is a little gimmick on the bottom of the skirt where you could move the legs side to side which allows for a little more natural movement when it comes to, let, let's say, posing a gun plot in the air. When utilizing all of the, the articulation points that I explained to you earlier, this kit can pose just like so. And guys, back in 2015, this was very impossible to do. Uh, you cannot do the kneeling action, you can't do the beam saber action. At the time, this was very, very innovative. The kit includes some few weaponries that goes with the kit, and these are some of the weapons that you, you may be familiar if you're 
a cla an old classic Gundam fan. So starting with, we have the original beam rifle from the Gundam series. This one had just started it all. And I believe this is the almost the exact same part from the original HG release. So not, no big changes here. Uh, the, ye the yellow part of the scope is a separation, which is, that is pretty good. The sub grip you can use to move it around for more action. And the kit also comes with the rifle hand only on the right side. Speaking of hands, this kit also includes a pair of open hands for more posability and action pose. Next, we have the Hyper Bazooka. And this one, again, I think this is almost the exact same as the old kit, but the one main difference is that you could move the handle back and forth for ease of holding it. The one thing that I really like about this kit is the inner detail of this kit. You can see the ammunition at the back, which are far detailed, and you could literally take it out and you can see how really detailed this is. I mean, just look at that. This, uh, on a very simple looking kit, it's very detailed out and I love the effort that Bandai put in this to commemorate their 35th. Of course, it's not a Gundam without its shield. Uh, the shield itself is very well done. I think this is another change point from comparing with the older kit. Uh, the yellow Federation marking over here is a completely new part and it's the color separation is very well done. Uh, the red and the white is also pretty good. Overall, it's a pretty simple looking shield. Uh, you can see there's some molds that they've added here from top and bottom. But the back side is where they really did it, outdid it with the detail. Look at all these inner molds that you see here. I didn't even panel on this, but if I panel on this right now, it looks really cool. Uh, the other thing they did was the handle. The shield handle itself, you can move it around so the Gundam can hold it. And you also have the joint to put it on their, their arm. So basically, when you want to put this together, the first thing you would do is you will put the, the handle first into the hand. You just slip it in. And then after you've attached it, you could simply slide it up and just attach it to the arm. And there you have a very rigid shield. I mean, with Gundam, you have to have the shield. This kit also comes with two long beam saber effect parts, so you could just stick this into the beam saber. Uh, the beam saber effect part itself is actually one of the longest parts that you ever see in an HG kit, so if you get this kit and you can use this on any HG, and it looks pretty dope. As, as an additional bonus, uh, this kit also comes with a clip for attaching your bazooka at the back of the skirt. So basically there's a cover right here that you can lift up so. All you gotta do is just replace that through and then you have a clip right there. Then all you gotta do is just, just take your bazooka, just clip it on, and very easily you could clip it on the back of the Gundam, which is pretty cool. Did you enjoy the review? My overall final impression of this kid is this kit is very, very good for, for what it is right now. Commemorating the 30th anniversary, as you can see, this kit is well built. The silhouette is all set and the basic articulation is far better than the older kit before. Usually when you go back to an like, older kit, uh, there are some frustrations of how uh, technicality and then kind of the overall development technology that the old technology we've seen. For Bandai's making the right choice of reviving or revising the, the first iconic mobile suit in history of robot anime, uh, I think they did a very good job just uh, reviving it up to today's standard. For newcomers, this is a must. This is where you start Gunpla. For veterans who have been built for a long time, this is also a must to let them remind themselves that we live in an age where Gunpla is actually very good to do. My final score for this kit is going to be 10 out of 10. Highly recommended for beginners and advanced builders. Uh, we've come a long way. Good job, Bandai. With that being said, this has been EA Spots from the Plamo Build Report. Make sure you like and subscribe, and also hit that bell button for more updates on my build report. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.